praise the Lord. Worship Christ the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My dear friends, the readings of this Sunday invite us to reflect on the kind of religion we practice in our lives. Is our religion a matter of petty-minded observances or is it a matter of reaching out to other people with compassion? As we begin this Eucharist, let us pause for a while and look into our own lives. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Prabhu 
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading, a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statues, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For the psalm, our response shall be The just will live in the presence of the Lord The just will live in His presence The just will live in the presence of the Lord The just will live in His presence shall dwell on your holy mountain, he who walks without fault, he who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. The just will live in the presence of the Lord, the just will live in his presence. The just will live in the presence of the Lord, the just will live in His presence. He who does no wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbor, who holds the godless in disdain, but honors those who fear the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. The just will live in His presence. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. The just will live in His presence. He who keeps his pledge, come what may, who takes no interest in a loan, and accepts no bribe against the innocent, such a man will stand firm forever. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. 
The just will live in His presence. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. The just will live in His presence. Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. James. My beloved brothers, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the fathers of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own he will, will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory be to you, o Lord. Lord. At that time, when the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And Jesus said to them, How well did the prophet Isaiah prophesy of you, of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines, the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the traditions of men. And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. For from within, out of the heart of man, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, these come out. All these evil things come from within, and they are what defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, let me bring a few facts before your attention. 
In a certain Catholic school, a girl came to class with Mahendi designs on her hands. When she was asked to wash it off, some fanatics rushed in and damaged school property, claiming that their religious sentiments were offended. Of course, it was all pre-planned. Incident number two. When the Twin Towers were attacked in New York in 2001, the terrorists who bashed the planes into those Twin Towers were heard to exclaim, Allahu Akbar! They were doing this dastardly act in God's name. A third fact. Around 30 to 40 years ago, there was a bloody civil war going on in Northern Ireland, Ireland. And who were the fighting parties? They were both Christian groups, Catholics and Anglicans, fighting over petty issues. And it was this civil war that almost destroyed the entire land. It is facts like these that give religion a bad name. Religion is often associated with intolerance, petty-mindedness, external observances regarding food, clothing and social customs. In today's Gospel, for example, we notice that the Pharisees at the time of Jesus considered themselves to be custodians of religion and having taken charge of it, they made life intolerable for the common man, for the ordinary Jew, with minute rules and regulations about how they were to dress, what they were to eat, how they were to behave, etc. Jesus confronted them boldly by pointing out that they were unduly sanctifying human traditions while neglecting matters that are of far more importance. Times have changed, but human nature remains the same. As we can see, the intolerance, the petty-mindedness, and the externalism that dominated the religion of the Pharisees is still very much a part and parcel of our lives today, albeit in new forms of expression. That's why many serious-minded people today are asking, do we really need religion at all? Isn't mankind better off without it? Well, what do you think? I personally feel that religion per se is not bad. It binds us together with a common identity. It gives us a sense of direction. If we throw it out altogether, we risk throwing out the baby with the bath water, as the idiom goes. Nevertheless, we must realize that there are lots of things that people do in the name of religion that are really peripheral to religion itself. And when their importance is magnified, religion becomes a burden on our backs. That's why in the first reading that we heard today, God tells the people through Moses, these are the commandments that I have given you. Add nothing more to them and take away nothing from them. Unfortunately, the Pharisees failed to carry out those instructions. They multiplied God's commandments until they ended up with 613 of them, enough to turn religion into a nightmare for the common man. Jesus restored religion to its proper perspective by reminding us that all God's commandments ultimately boil down to only two, love of God and love of neighbor. 
Thus, the heart of true religion is love. Not, senti not sentimental love, mind you, but effective love. Love seen in action. That's precisely what St. James tells us in today's second reading. Pure, unspoiled religion in the eyes of God our Father is this, to help the orphans and widows when they need it, and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the values of the world. St. James also reminds us that we should not only be hearers of the word, but doers of the word also. You may have heard of the American psychologist William James, who flourished in the first half of the 20th century. In his book, The Varieties of Religious Experience, William James says that there are two kinds of religion, healthy-minded religion and sick-minded religion. The religion of the healthy-minded is a religion that liberates. Healthy-minded religion enables us to live up to the full stature of our humanity with joy and with optimism. It's a religion that goes by the maxim, the glory of God is man fully alive. The religion of the sick-minded instead is a religion that enslaves people with fears and phobias and taboos, sucking us into a vortex of rigidity, pessimism, and intolerance. It's a religion that thrives on fear. We are witness in these days to the tragic things that are happening in Afghanistan. Why do you think so many people want to flee from Afghanistan today? Where does Christianity stand in this regard? Christianity, like any other religion, is ambivalent. It can be lived with a healthy-minded approach, or it can be lived with a sick-minded approach. We can turn our religion into an oppressive set of do's and don'ts, or we can live out our religion with a buoyant awareness of God's love for us and carry this awareness into our service towards our fellow men. The final choice, therefore, is a personal one. So let me ask you, how do you intend to live your Christianity? Let me close with another true anecdote. Michael Goldberg was an American Jew. He founded the American Communist Party. When he was a child, he lived in the Jewish ghetto in Brooklyn. His parents had warned him not to venture beyond the limits of the ghetto for his own safety. But one day, Overcome with an adventurous spirit, Michael strolled out of the ghetto into the Christian quarters of the city. Soon enough, he was spotted by a group of Christian youngsters who recognized that he was a Jew. They surrounded him and began to taunt him, pinch him and scratch him, saying, hey, you Jew, it was your people who killed Jesus Christ. When Michael managed to break free from them, he ran home and threw himself into his mother's arms, sobbing. And the first words that came out of his lips were, Mommy, who is Jesus Christ? Michael Goldberg grew up to become a leader. As I said, he founded the Communist Party in the USA. Later still, 
When Michael became an old man, he had no one to look after him and he was admitted into a Catholic hospice looked after by nuns. But right till the very end, he never wanted to hear of Christianity or even consider the possibility of baptism. All because of the experience that he went through on the first day he ever heard the name of Jesus Christ. It gives us something to think about. So let me end by posing a question. Does our style of living, our Christianity, draw people closer to Christ or does it drive them away from him? Think about it. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was, was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He went down to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring our various prayers of petition and intercession to the Lord. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy and religious, that as leaders in the church, they may become true shepherds of the people after the heart of Jesus. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. St. James says that pure religion is one that comes to the assistance of people in affliction, such as the orphans and the widows, that we too may come to the aid of people who suffer, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the grace to rid ourselves of acts such as coveting, deceit, envy, slander, pride and foolishness, which, if left unchecked, will eventually destroy us. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as wisdom, understanding, fortitude, piety, and fear of the Lord, may guide all our actions. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that enlightened by the word of God, we may grow in the love of God and neighbor, which is the sum total of all commandments. We pray, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. These and all the other intentions that are dear to our hearts, we bring to you, Heavenly Father, and place them on your altar in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This bread we offer, root of the earth, work of our hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed be God, blessed be God, blessed be God forever. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our Amen. good and good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know that it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that in the cause of our downfall, sorry, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels and saints adore you and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices blend with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similarly, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, 
He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the Passion, Death, and resurrection of Jesus, your Son, we offer to you, Heavenly Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Lutz Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, with St. John Bosco, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus has taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the confidence to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us your peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her that promised peace and unity of your Kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us exchange a meaningful sign of peace. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take you away the, the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A 
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. How great is the goodness, O Lord, that you keep for those who fear you. Psalm 31, verse 20. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbors. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, Hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love. And the one who lives in love, lives in God, and God lives in him. God is love, and the one who lives in love, lives in God, and God lives in him. And we have come to know and have believed the love that God has for us. in love, lives in God, and God lives in Him. God is peace, and the one who lives in peace, lives in God, and God lives in Him. God is peace, and the one who lives in peace, lives in God, and God lives in Him. And we have come to and have believed the peace that God has for us. God is peace, and the one who lives in peace lives in God.